Hey guys, it's Britt, and uh, yesterday I did a video talking um, about something entirely different, but I wanted to kind of discuss things that I've changed my mind about in the past few weeks and or the past uh, year or so. And uh, this, this is going to be what I call the, uh, the Game of Thrones edition. Um, this will probably contain major spoilers from seasons 1 through 7. So if, if you're not caught up with the series or you don't want spoilers for season 7, I will do my best to uh, warn you what seasons I'm talking about. But I, I really haven't planned this. So I just I just talk. And all the seasons kind of blur together to me at this point. But um, point number one that I, I want to discuss, which is in relation to season one through three, and um, that's that's Catelyn and Rob Stark. Um, I still don't always agree with Kathleen. However, I, I have gained a lot of respect for her character um, in the past few weeks as I'm re-watching the series and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I chat with Devin nearly every single night. <laughs> And um, we, we've we've had some um, we've had some interesting conversations about uh, Catelyn in particular, and whether you like Cat or not, and you agree with what she did with um, in regards to John. Um, She was a very strong-willed woman <laughs> who loved her family. She would do anything for her family to protect that. And even with John, she knows, she's very aware that, that her hatred towards this, this child, this 14-year-old boy, is very unfair. Um, and this applies to book Catelyn as well. Um, I think... I think it was hard for me to sympathize with show Cat because in the books we spend so much time... Uh, such a key part of Cat's inner struggle is within her, her own head. And that's hard to show on screen without doing voiceovers. And I'm glad that they didn't go that route. I think Michelle did amazing. She is an amazing cat. She's the cat I picture in the books. Um, and that goes for all of the cast as well. But I, I've really... I may not agree with everything she does or says, but I gained a lot of respect for her. Way more than I had when I first started this channel. I Is she impulsive? Yes. Is she flawed? Yes. But that's what being human is. Being flawed. She knows she makes mistakes, and nobody's perfect. Nobody. Um, and in regards to, to Rob, um, I became painfully aware of just how young Rob is. And um, Major major, major spoilers for season three right here. Serious 
It's a major spoiler. Uh, mute me till I put my finger down if you don't want to hear this. Or if you're not caught up. Um, Bob was, what, 14 in the books? Maybe 19, 20 in the show? They took a 14-year-old boy and they murdered him at his own wedding. Because they didn't agree with things that he said, things that he did, because he, he wanted, he, he, because he didn't want to marry a fray. And he wanted to marry for love to make his dad proud. It's terrible. He was too young. And all the Starks were too young. They had no idea what they were signing up for. And I, I know, like, in Westeros, it's a little different and the show ups their ages, but, jeez. To murder a son, a wife, a mother, at a wedding. Even for Game of Thrones standards, especially a 14, a 14-year-old 14 boy, is terrible. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a, uh, that's a spoiler segment that is, uh, over and done with, um, another point. Oh, Daenerys slash Amelia Clark. Um, this, this is an overall Danny thing. Um, I know I give Amelia Clark a lot of crap. <laughs> um, and... I feel kind of bad for that now, um, thinking about it. I have to remember that these people are also, like, human beings, and while, while, while Amelia Clark will probably never, ever, ever see my tweets, I'm not in her shoes. I don't spend 16 hours filming a day. I don't spend most of my days in front of a green screen or crawling on a green screen i i think she's got kind of the um hating christiansen vibe because when when you put amelia clark in front of people um she does fairly fairly well when she's not you know on top of drogon um i think it's it's a very strange uh, observation, but I think her best her best work as Daenerys was in season one through three, and then things kind of fell downhill for her, and I think that has to do a lot with like what what I said. Um, she spends a lot of time in front of a green screen, not actually interacting with people. And that can that can hinder, and uh, uh, even the most experienced actors. Um, also, she's got some pretty hard dialogue to deliver. Um, the dialogue, regardless of who writes it, is is never the best. But um, She's got some pretty hard stuff to uh, deliver, so she's on top of, you know, having to look at a tennis ball and just imagining that a tennis ball just died in front of you. That's hard. Um, that's hard. <laughs> and, um... Danny as a character, I've I've completely changed my point of view on. Um, I 
when I first started watching the series, um, Danny was one of my favorites, and you know, besides Theon. Um, but um, towards season five, I kind of really started to dislike her, and in in season six and seven, that that was no exception. But um, I kind of sat down and I kind of really thought about it, and um, I gotta give Devin some credit here too because he probably put these thoughts in in my brain but um I have to remember where she came from um she came from nothing she was sold to the Dothraki the Dothraki of all people who are for you know lack of better words they're not they're not the best people they 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 burn people, they rape people, they pillage. That's that's the Dothraki way. And Danny learned from that. That shaped the leader that she became. And so spoiler alert for like season three through seven. Danny gets real good at burning people real fast, especially if she, um, especially in season three when she frees the, the Unsullied, uh, claims the Unsullied, they choose to follow her, it's, 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 it, it, it's got its issues, but, sorry, my name, if you can hear that, my neighbor just decided to go out on his motorcycle at, uh, nine. 30 that night but um yeah just I don't know I guess I kind of look back and love Danny and I, I gotta give props to Amelia Clark because she does her best um with what she's given it's 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 hard um this was her first major role and it's it's hard. It'd be hard for any actress to portray such a now iconic character, no less somebody who was up until recently had little to no acting experience and just watching her grow. And the same with Kit. Um, Kit has improved. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a huge Jon Snow fan, but I like Jon. I think Jon's a cool guy. Um, Jon is not exempt from the flawed people rule, but that's what being human is. We're, we're flawed. And Jon is also young. Um, I think he's like... 18? 18 in the books? 18 or 19? So, um, no, was, was, was John 14 or 18? I think he was 18 in the books, but regardless, um, I like John. Um, he's a cool dude. He can stay. Um, what, what happened to him in season six put my finger up again um he was betrayed <laughs> by the night's watch they stabbed him to death because he didn't want to because <laughs> he wanted to help people a reason why he joined the night's watch in the first place and he didn't even want to be lord commander but they 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 put him in this position anyway so it's, it's kind of hard not to feel bad for John. He's, he's at the lowest end of the totem pole at the start of the story. And the best part about John is that John has earned the respect of the men of the Night's Watch. Nobody blindly follows him. They, they follow him because they believe in him. And it's great. Um, Stannis. Stannis is a big one. 
that I've changed my mind about. And I kind of came to this revolution, um, like a week or two ago. Um, if I'm going to defend Theon, I gotta defend Stannis. Um, their situations aren't all that different at the end of the day, and, um, Spoiler alert for season six. When when Stannis burned Shireen, um, it was terrible. I scream and I yell whenever I watch that scene. It's terrible. It's terrible. But just li- but he. You have to understand Stannis' thought process here. I'm not condoning it. Because it's terrible. But Stannis thought that if he made the sacrifice, if he sacrificed one person, one, it would save hundreds, if not thousands, of people. And Stannis is a badass. Like, he's a really, he, like, in my opinion, and you can disagree with me here if you want, but um, in my opinion, Stannis is probably one of the best, stra- like, what's the word? Um, strategic people in... Game of Thrones, um, he he probably has some of the best plans. They don't always work out in his favor. I I fingers going up again. Uh, mute me till I put it down. Um, well, you know, burning Shireen wasn't great. It wasn't a great plan. That wasn't one of Stan's better ideas. You gotta understand why he did it, and. You know. Uh, what other things have I changed my mind about? Um, defending Dan and Dave. Um, it, it, I'm done defending Dan and Dave. Um, I'm done. Um, I've made excuses for them in the past, but season seven showed me just how much they do not care anymore and um it's kind of like a slap in the face to uh, the people that have supported the show for so long and I understand that they're getting tired they're getting burned out it's been seven seasons but um gosh people thought season Five was bad. I think season seven was the worst out of all of them. Um, I really liked season five, by the way. Um, I also liked season six, but I think you guys already knew that, and I think you guys know why I like season six. <laughs> but um, yeah, not that season seven didn't have its good moments because it it did. Um, but. There's a lot that that could have been fixed with season seven, but I'm just I'm done. I'm done defending Den Dave, and I'm also done defending Mr. George R. R. Martin because I know I know it's hard to write a book. I know it's hard to write a series, but George, you have time to write an entire Targaryen history book. But you don't have time to write The Winds of Winter? It's been seven years, George. Seven. That's a long time. And while I, like, admittedly, and I know this is a really, 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 really unpopular opinion, but, um, guys, I started with the show. The show is my favorite way to enjoy it. Um, I like A Song of Ice and Fire. I will buy all the books related to A Song of Ice and Fire. But
but I don't know. There's, there's just a, I get a completely different feeling when I see it on screen, and I know they diverge dramatically. But these are the characters that I've fallen in love with. The, the show characters I've, I've fallen in love with. And I don't know. I just. I don't know. I just prefer the show. If you get upset about that, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, we all have our preferences. I'm not going to take the books away from you if you prefer them, but it's just my opinion. And opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. It happens. But anyway, guys, this video is getting really long, so I'm going to go and... Um, I hope you enjoyed my rambling. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you. Bye.